And as promised, before we even get in to the trade deadline shenanigans here, I'm going to read off the winners from last year's point scoring contest because I got so carried away in the last episode, I forgot to do it. So uh, there's so many because no one got a clean sweep in. This, <laughs> everyone seems to guess Vasilevsky pretty early on because obviously the Lightning are absolutely stacked. And sometimes he, you know, oftentimes he actually, you know, doesn't become the best goalie. But this year there was no debate. So we have uh, plenty of winners because, I mean, why wouldn't you guess Crosby to lead the way as well? So I'm going to read these off kind of in a bit of a lightning round fashion because, as I said, yeah, there's just so many. So first up here is fucking Stallion Duck. With uh, Crosby and Vasilevsky, weirdly, you didn't uh, submit a defensive uh, player, uh, but bold move. You still got two correct. Congrats to you. Uh, next up is a pronostic 88, guessing uh, getting Crosby and Vasilevsky, right? Um, going for dry saddle, which, which can work. Next up is Psycho Dad Jesse. Go, uh, Crosby and Vasilevsky again going for McDavid. Didn't quite pan out. Uh, next up here, random person uh, looking for McKinnon there amongst the uh, Crosby and Vasilevsky correct pick as well. So at least we're having a lot of uh, some decent uh, variation in that. Uh, next up is Yajiniwa with uh, Crosby and Vasilevsky also trying for McDavid. But it was Bergeron of all people this year. The hell was that? Um, Luke Moy, 1-2-3 with uh, Crosby and Vasilevsky also going for McJesus. Here we go into the uh, everyone going for McDavid round. Uh, next up is uh, Ryder Bradford, Crosby, Vasilevsky, also trying for McDavid, but didn't quite pan out. And uh, what do you know? Another one, Peter Parker, 21, Crosby and Vasilevsky looking for McDavid. But then we got some variation. Hunter plays Crosby, Vasilevsky, and going for Elias Pettersson. I don't know if I've ever seen him win it, but uh, good, good for you for uh, going outside the lines right there. Uh, next up is Kyle Guild with Crosby Vasilevsky going for Kucherov, which is rare to see, but he ha he can he can be that top guy. And last but not least is Zinthi with a cross bitch and Vasilevsky. There you go. Some strong feelings about Sidney Crosby here. Also looking for McJesus, but didn't quite pan out as I said before. So there you go. All the winners from the point scoring contest. Congrats to all you guys. And uh, we'll see how it pans out this this season. Hasn't been as many guesses, and I put that on myself for you know not reading it off, not letting you guys know. There's just so much to do that I just completely, uh, just completely skirted it. And I was just like, I got all these trades to make, all these free agents to pursue. I got right into the work mode. But you know what? It's paid off here. 37, 20, and five. 37, 20, and five, man. We're, we're right there, only three points behind the Rangers, who are god mode in this game, apparently, now. And uh, they're always, aren't they, like, always doing good in the early early couple seasons? It's kind of funny. Anyway, um, there they are. Here we are at the deadline with not a lot of cap space, as said. Um, and I was theorizing something, and now I'm kind of blanking on it, so I might have to go back and look at some notes on the subject, which I need to start doing more often, especially if I'm going to be start working in more different games, different franchises and stuff. Might have to keep notes to remind myself what the hell I was doing. <laughs> um, yeah, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to check on that real quick. All right. Yeah. I remember perhaps looking for an imp slight improvement on that fourth line. Um, just someone cause th the fourth line, it isn't bad, but it's also not good. Right. Like, they're, they're all minuses, and they're not really producing either. Not that you expect them to produce, but to be a grinder line, you all, you kind of need to shut it down. They're not doing that right now, <laughs> plain and simple. This line, unfortunately, is not really getting that job done. So, I like Pocket. I like McEwen. Maybe Clifford is the weaker link out of all of them. Uh, it's kind of hard to say. They're, Clifford and McEwen are kind of... Kind of similar. But here's the thing. McEwen doesn't go into the box as much as Clifford, so maybe that's also messing with some of the lines. I know Clifford's going to be fighting and stuff, which, fine. That, that's that, that's part of his role, obviously, with that amazing hairline. Um, but, yeah, if I was was to, I guess, get a replacement, he would maybe be that guy. So let's take a look. I think Furlan will be the guy, but I'm just going to search all grinders again, just just in case we, we see some. Um, 
I think he only has one year. If he has multiple years left, that might be kind of bad, though. Uh-oh, wait. Uh, Dustin Brown. We can also go for something like Dustin Brown. Always a possibility. Where the hell is Furland? What? Oh, he's way down. Oh, man, he tanked. Yeah, never mind. And he has an extra year left anyway, so it wouldn't have worked. Yeah, he... Wow, okay. Um... Damn, I, I wish I could get Dustin Brown, but even if I get the retention, it's no, it's not quite there. Shaw is the next closest kind of kind of thing. Or go for Smith, Zach Smith. One year we could retain on that, and we I honestly wouldn't even have to grab anyone else. It is a slight improvement. What's his penalty? He's got the same amount of penalty minutes. I'd almost want to get someone with le oh man, there might not be an option for less penalty minutes. Besides a guy like and Andorov has even more. So yeah, they're all like fighters and crap. Dustin Brown's the only one. Oh man, he's yeah, dude, he's he's actually kind of sick. But I I I don't see how we get him. It, it's it's too much value plus the retention. It won't be enough. We'd have to give up cap. Even trying to get shot. I I know we're at the, like the deadline, but that's where it's too. Yeah, no, it's unfortunately Zach Smith. The thing I like about Zach Smith is he's a clear upgrade. In fate, uh, in defense. But yeah, everyone's disciplines in the goddamn toilet. Someone like Hathaway, but he's got a, another an extra year after this. But he is much better, better discipline, but still takes hella penalties. So yeah, it's. I'm not. I'm not even really. We're not even really getting an upgrade here. The only reason I might do it is just because maybe you get another look. Maybe it. Maybe it works slightly better. I, I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards Zach Smith because, well, he's better defensively. Yeah, he's going to take penalties, I guess, but it gives you options. He's, he's in the AHL, so it's like, let's see. So I'll get them to retain just to be ultra safe. And what would they want for this? Could we give them up? I don't want any goalies. Okay, they want only NHL players. That's unfortunate. Um, there's some guys like this we can like Robbins we can give up. Bottom six guy we can give up. Those two guys, would that work with the retention? I don't know. I like how they're listed as a buyer, but they're 22, 32, and 9. What are you doing? <laughs> Whatever. Let's try that. Yeah, that'll go through. Cool. I'm, I'm happy with it. A couple prospects we're not going to use. We probably won't even pan out for another rental grinder. Now, that shouldn't actually... Why the fuck? How did that make us lose chemistry? What? <laughs> How the hell does that make us lose chemistry? That's silly. Now, did it get put on here or no? That's so stupid. Yeah, he did get put here. Cool. So, it's a slight upgrade over Clifford. Mostly, I'm looking at the, def the, the defensive awareness, right? It's a two upgrade. Again, it's not huge, huge difference. But it's just, I don't know. You never know what happens if you throw another player on that line. It does make the line slightly better. Chemistry remains the same. Let's try it out, and then we have, we, and then it's it's more depth. So if we have a fourth line injury or something, we have Clifford that we could throw in there, right? It's it's a small, it's a little thing, but that's about it. That's really all I can think of. And for trades, uh, everything else is kind of it's working ish, or it's good enough. We can't really get an upgrade on the goalie. That was really all we could do under in our cap situation with what we had to work with. That that's about it. It wasn't the, the biggest of upgrades. I was hoping for something a bit more impactful, but there really wasn't anything that we could have done. Um, yeah. I mean, at the deadline, there's only a certain amount left, but I still think for for cap purposes, it, 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 it'll it still not really work. Plus, I don't want to run into that glitch with where you trade for a guy and then you can't actually use him. Because you can't, like, move him up and, and shit. Anyway. Uh, so, yeah. Slight upgrade. Who's to say if it really makes a difference? But if if that fourth line performs better with Zach Smith than Clifford, I mean, it, it'll be highly worth it. It's a it's a pretty much a zero risk trade essentially, and it if if it works, it works. I mean, that's it's really what it comes down to. And like I said, 
Absolutely zero risk on that trade. So Bufflin, okay, he's now down to top four. I'm pretty sure he was at elite before, so likely not going to hold on to him again. I'll probably not extend him. Although it is pretty freaking cheap. That is really cheap. And we do have the veteran coach, but... Yeah, I don't know, man. That's that's a pretty damn good deal. Hmm, I mean, what, what are the odds we're going to find something better and affordable in free agency? Eh, hard to say. We could always trade Bufflin if we do find him. I kind of want to lock him into that price. Speaking of prices, uh, Lar Larson. A little bit too much for what he brings to the table, but maybe I extend him anyway. I don't want to get him multiple years or anything like that. Does Joseph, do you want a reasonable deal at this point? Not, yeah. All right, at least they look like you're growing. I'll get him to two years because then he'll still be RFA. Yeah, it should be. Oh, one sec. Just needed to get that old calculator out, and I think we will keep around, Joseph. Just for a couple of years, though. We're not going to move too fast on him, as I said. Plus, this keeps him at, a, uh, excuse me, an RFA range. So, definitely want to do that. Two years at 1.625. Yeah, it's pretty fair. He might, he might get to, like, 83. I don't think it'll be anything terrific, but 83. I mean, at least increase that trade value. I don't know if we'll ever use that long, longer term, but... When we enter that rebuild, he could be a pretty good spot filler. So, yeah. Uh, Larson, Bufflin. The thing about Larson is he's a solid DFD. And him and, him and Krug seem to work well enough together. Another good thing about him is he fits into the second line scheme really well too. So, I kind of want to keep him around just, just for those reasons. The problem with it is he does kind of want a lot of money. We will save some on him. He's not terrific, but, you know, he does shut it down. I mean, for the most part, he's a good shutdown guy. He doesn't take a huge amount of penalties either. So, don't, I'm, I'm going to say don't, don't look at that overall right now. And the question is, how many years do I get him to? That's, that's the question. He's young enough. I do like the way he works with Krug. Maybe line him up with Joseph two years. Maybe. What are our other contracts looking like? Yeah, Malkin, we extended for that one year. Tarasenko's got the one year. Oh, yeah, Tarasenko's a big one. Hmm. You're going to have to keep Malkin going probably year by year, the Joe Thornton treatment. Looking back, I could have probably given him better because he's still listed as a lead. I'll, I'll keep playing him if he keeps, you know, keeps it up like this. But I'll take him, you know, as I said, to those shorter term things. We're definitely going to want to get Tarasenko back. That might cost some money. We have Tory Krug locked in for a while. Bufflin, I mean, we could save money on him. Yeah, Gensel's got that extra year or so. Two years almost makes the most sense. Yeah, you know what? Let's do, let's do Larson for, for two years. I think that makes the most sense. It lines up with a couple other bigger pieces. So, except for Tarasenko, obviously. But I feel like we should be able to keep him around. And this will... Whoa, really? Hold on. Oh, yeah. Four. Four flat. You know, that's not bad. Two by four for what he brings to the table where he's being played. I think that's pretty good. So, yeah. Let's let's do that. Two by four. Um, And do you keep around Bufflin? Probably. Honestly. I, I, I have no complaints about how he's playing this year. Besides maybe get a bit more production, but I guess he's the, the more of the shutdown guy on there. So we'll do one year deal. Yeah, he might decline, but this is a pretty cheap deal, all things considered. It'll be 4-3 for a year, so save some money on him too and keep around his skill set. Yeah, he'll probably decline a bit, but we do have the veteran coach, so hopefully they could keep that under control at least a little bit. I do really like him. Honestly, I do. And again, if we find if we find someone monumentally better who we can afford, and you know maybe we trade Bufflin in that situation, but I don't know. I don't. I don't mind it right now. Okay, Lindgren, bro. Yeah, not gonna worry about that. Was that it? Um. Oh yeah, Kasperi cap, and does he still want stupid amounts of money? Why does he want so much money? Shit, dude. Well, I mean, he is an 84. And he's a youngish guy. What's he bringing to the table? Yeah, he's got 39 points, almost 20 goals. It makes sense. He is solid. Uh, and now 
now cop wants a bunch because he's having a hell of a year. Damn. Coleman. We could at least save money on him, but... Uh, I, that cop is tricky because I do want to get him back, but he's asking for way too much at that price tag. It, it really is too much. Like I want, I, I can't. I want to give him in, in the three range. Cap it, it makes a bit more sense giving him more money like this. But not, first of all, not for that long. Second of all, God, that's still a lot of money for what he's bringing to the table. This is going to be in the high fours. Yeah, I don't know, man. <sighs> it's right there for a third liner. What are we looking at next year? I mean, we could be okay. I would love to keep around some of these grinders for cheaper if I can. Does Pocket want to... I don't know what's up with this guy always wanting expensive deals, but at least this is... A better price so let's let's lock him in I do want pocket still he's a very very good fourth line center so save a couple hundred thousand on him right there want to get as many of these done as possible right now Coleman could probably find someone better yeah damn it though I really liked what cop was bringing to the table it's just yeah he wants he wants a lot because well he's, he's doing so good Thing is, if we give him that contract and then he doesn't do well. But the other thing is, he could also drop down. But, yeah, I don't know, man. He's going to be more expensive in RFA and probably in normal free agency. Ah, I really don't know. Is such a tough call. I'm gonna. I think I just have to hold off I, on on those guys. They're they're third liners, right? They're third liners. I can't. I don't feel comfortable giving them up near the four and five range. I, I really don't. So I'm not gonna. You know, they're third liners. I gotta try to keep them around here if I can to so we have money for other stuff. Remember, we're still kind of lacking a goaltender. So yeah, we'll hold off on that. Like ah, uh, like what? Why isn't Capin and what Greenway is getting, man? They're pretty comparable point scoring. <laughs> well, Kapanen wants money. He's being annoying with it, whatever. I'll have to just hold off on those. I can't really do a whole lot about that. I'll keep checking. But we're going to have to hold off on, on a few of those. It's just, it is what it is. I, I, I can't really make that sort of commitment right now. I don't really like that price tag. So let's go. All right, we got Pocket, Larson. Joseph, Bufflin, there we go. Um, oh, yeah, so, someone wanted me to go back to doing the thing. Now, they said it doesn't best lines you anymore, but then someone else said that it does if you make a, a roster trade. So I'm going to continue to skip it. I'll have to test it on my own. Here's the thing. I don't fucking play this game on my own. So, <laughs> oh, which is, I, I think I mentioned that before, really pathetic. One of the first years, I mean, this is the first year in since I've been doing YouTube, where I have not played this game on my own. I don't have a Be A Pro series on my own. I don't have a franchise series on my own. That's been the case since day one. And that is, I don't know if that's me being jaded or it's just, this this series has just been declining so heavily. I do play e EASHL on my own and for LG, but mostly I play with my LG guys. What kind of player is Lemieux in this? He's not a grinder, is he? No, he's a power forward. That'd be hilarious if he was a grinder. Big win right there against Detroit. But yeah, that's really the only mode that I play, like, independently off recording. And most of it's because I'm in a league. <laughs> God damn, EA. That says a lot about your game. I mean, it's in such a... Well, see, there we go. <laughs> it's good fucking thing we picked up Zach Smith, huh? Oh my God, he's actually out forever. He is out for a while, man. Jeez. Oops, oops, oops. Back to edit lines. Okay, so... Kyle Clifford, seven all lines, I guess. Will that keep our chemistry up, at least? Yeah. 
All right. So there you go. We lost McEwen. Kyle Clifford's got to go back in there. Rip. All right. Tough loss right there. But we answered back with a win. So for the most part, since the deadline, we've been in, 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 a, good, in a good spot. But yeah, you losing McEwen like that really sucks. All right. Let me do some scouting real quick. All right, continuing on. Oh, good. <laughs> Here come all the injuries. All right, whatever. Get them out of the way before the playoffs. That's fine. Just get them out of the way. We don't have to deal with them, hopefully, when come the playoffs. It's a couple rough ones right there. So McEwen's actually out for most of the playoffs, or at least like half of them. He said May, May 6th. So luckily, Bufflin will be back. But ugh, so with these injuries now, we're losing some games. Oh, my God. Four-game losing streak before that. We had a couple before a win. Yeah, we started off the month pretty good, but then definitely faltering right here. We got to get some wins back. There we go. Three in a row. We're not going to get a 50-win season, but that's okay. We're going to make the playoffs. There we are. Bufflin's back. Good. So throw him back in there, fully healed. Get him a warm-up game before the playoffs. Come on, win that game. There we go. Okay, 7-4 win at the end. 10 points behind the Rangers. They had a hell of a year. Who are we taking on? Taking on Carolina in the first round. We got home ice advantage as well. So we at least have that going for... Although this is this season, we weren't too good on home ice. So who knows? Who knows if that's even a positive. But 76 locker room chemistry. Not too bad. Not too shabby. Speaking of which, watch watch Crosby not be listed as a leader. Okay, good. <laughs> wow. Should take away the A from Malkin, huh? Give it to Landeskog. <laughs> we got... That's good locker room stuff. Three leaders and a presence in Cop. God damn it. Now Cop's making me want to be more because he's a presence. It's hilarious, honestly, in real life that Malkin has the A. Doesn't even... He, like, refuses to, like, speak English. <laughs> anyway. It's good to have those guys in the locker room, for sure. Okay, now... Let's wrap things up here. 96 points for Crosby. What a year. All right, so yeah, we still have trouble keeping that puck in on that, but we're scoring a lot. Three, seven, six, three, three, two goals against. Not good. Power play was very good. Yeah, penalty kill was in the toilet. Home record got slightly better, but it's still kind of bad when you consider it. Yeah, and we weren't on the greatest stretch. Missing McEwen definitely hurts. I think, I don't know. It's hard to say if if him Smith. We're doing better, but it doesn't matter at this point because we have to go with Clifford back in there. We are actually the top offensive team. Uh, just below, or just above the Rangers. Actually, not really just above. 0.16. That's pretty high. Yeah, so we were the best offensive team. Defense is another story, though. <laughs> not even close. Definitely in the bottom half of things. Power play. We had the best power play, too, by a pretty wide margin. 4%. 4.1, man. That's crazy. Uh, belly kill. Yeah, middle, bottom half. It's, yeah. Kind of what it is. How many shorties did we get at least? Mm, yeah, we got a decent chunk of shorties. Seven. So yeah, we're just a very offensively driven team. Is that going to be enough for the playoffs? I don't know. Uh, Jari's going to have to pull a rabbit out of the hat here and play his ass off. Wow. Look at that. 96 points for Crosby. 95 for Tarasenko and Malkin. 80 for Landeskog. Look, these acquisitions really paid off. Krug, nice 69 points. Didn't hit 70 like I wanted, but... Nice, 69 points. And 20 goals, man. What a year. If only he had better plus minus, I could see him winning the Norris. Uh, Gensel had 65 points. Only only 19 goals, hilariously. But whatever, it's working. Capping in with a 52-point year. So, uh, yeah, it makes sense what that he's asking for what he's asking. Cop with 50 points. I mean, that's your third line. Uh, Greenway, only 45 points. Not the greatest, but you know what? It, he's a chemistry guy, right? He helps out. We got him for really cheap, sub three million a year for two more years. It, it's working. Latang had forty one points. Coleman thirty three only minus twenty. So that's the reason I'm not looking to really resign him. Bufflin plus minus could have been better. Ugh, that fourth line. Well, hopefully they kind of do better. I don't know if they will though. Yeah, Zach Smith minus five and twenty games played here, kind of on pace with everyone else. So that fourth line's just a bit of an issue. Ugh. 
Uh, Lindgren actually didn't get the points I needed out of him at the end of all things. He only got 20 and 21, so pretty pretty rough. And Jari, pretty rough. Oh, Martin Jones and Aaron Dell right here. Let's go. Well, we have to hope that our goalies decide to play good in the playoffs. We have to hope that Jari is indeed a cheese goalie. We need him to be a cheese goaltender here in the playoffs. Absolutely. Or else we are in trouble. Uh, there he is. There he goes. McDavid leads the way. 104 points. Missed some time. 47 goals. 57 assists. And he's leading the way. Shifley with 103. Strom with 103. And then Kane with 101. Interesting. But we were up there. Crosby only 8 points behind McDavid. <laughs> Congrats on that. How about goals? Let's see. Dreisaitl leads the way in goals. 49. All right, McKinnon right below with 48. How about assists? Where the hell is uh, Ovechkin? He should be up here, right? Hold on, where is he? Tarasenko is up there. Oh, there he is down there, 41 only. Not really declining fast. Interesting, rough year for Ovi. Might actually not break that record in this one. All right, anyway, assist leader was Barzell. Then it was Strom, Shifley, and Malkin was up there too. All right, let's see some of the good lines. We're going to be up there. Yeah, Landis. Look at that. We actually had one of the best lines in the NHL. Landis got Crosby, Tarasenko, and it makes sense. Landis got a great physical and good defensive player. Crosby, I mean, he is, he does everything. Playmaker is, it's, you know, you have to assign him a role, but he literally does any, everything. He's a grinder. He's a goddamn beast. I've hated him for years, but at, at the end of the day, you have to respect the skill set that he brings to the table and the work ethic. Incredible. Anyway, um, game winners. Who's the most clutch? Perhaps Bergeron. That's, yeah, 11 game winners in 37 goals. That's pretty damn impressive. All right, power play goal leader. McKinnon with 25 goals in the power play. That's ridiculous. Uh, power play point totals 34 for Giroux, 32 for Crosby. We actually have one of those guys up there. We rarely have had that in the. So there you go. All right, shorties. Chandler Stevenson with three. Any of our guys up there? Not that I can see. How about shorty points? Uh, not. Oh, Paquette's up there with four. Yeah, I guess we had both of our PK lines getting some, uh, getting some points in there. Cool. All right, let's look at the Selkie race here. Kopitar's up there. Uh, Larkin up there too. Nice. Wow. Okay, yeah. And he's got some solid hits. Not a whole ton of block shots, but maybe. Uh, Taves, man, if only. If only he was actually playing center with those numbers. Uh, Couturier's got to be up there. This should be a tight race. M Voracek a mention. Oh, Horvat. Okay, not enough face-offs, but could have been up there maybe. Uh, Noah O'Reilly. So good to see. You. Okay, I should get some decent different guys up there. There's Bergeron up there as well. I'm actually not too sure who's gonna. There's a lot of. That's a close race. Lindholm's even up there. Jesus. All right, this is gonna be a tight Selkie race. I'm excited to see who comes out on top of that. Uh, let's see. Hot Sam Bacho, 77 points plus 16. Probably gonna be taking home that Norse Canucks fans. Will, Bitch and moan about it, but doesn't matter. Makar's better than Hughes. Shabbat's winning the Norris over Hughes. Deal with it. All right. Goalies. Let's see here. Uh, hella suck at the top. And I wouldn't even say anyone else could get close to tying him. You could, make, you could say, oh, Vasilevsky with the close goals against, but his save percentage is worse. He's on a much better team. It's Hellebuck hands down for me. 34, 23, and 7. Like, he's not on a fantastic team, and he put up numbers like that. He was he was carrying them, essentially. So I'd say Hellebuck on his own. Yeah, it's just because of that huge differential in save percentage, man. If Rask had, like, a comparable or slightly better save percentage with the goals against, you could throw his name in the hat, but I, I have a hard time. Putting anyone, ah, excuse me, other than Hellebuck at the top there. So that's that's my that's my take on that. Uh, I hate doing that. It's got to be on one. Don't ask me why. Uh, Alex Turk got 67 points. It's all right, minus eight, but pretty damn good rookie year from the kid. Yeah, looking solid. 
Uh, even if there's a great goalie, that probably won't... Um, oh, there's not even... Well, if it w imagine if he had those numbers and actually played... Tw oh my god. <laughs> Gotta love the small sample size and the cheesy goalies. Alright, anyway, the fact he didn't get lit up in one of those five games is hilarious. Alright, anyway, whatever. <laughs> Let's do the fun stats now. Hits. Alright, couple guys at 200. Uh, Marshawn and Jost. And fights. Uh, Wilson was 7. Clifford was 7. Wow, okay. Not as many fights as I thought there would be, but alright, cool. Weak. Soft league. Soft league, kind of, kind of league that finds a player for pushing a guy back over the red line in warmups. All right, let's take a look at the playoff tree: Winnipeg and Chicago, Dallas and the Oilers, Vegas and the Sharks. That'll be good. And the Ducks and the Avs in the East: the Pens and the Canes, the rain, the Rags and the Caps, the Habs and the Bolts, and uh, the Sens and the. You don't have a cool one, Florida. The Sens and the Cats. There we go. <laughs> I it's I we, we were there. We, we were saying it. We had all the we were going for all the uh, nicknames there. The Cats. There we go. And now the Cats. Deej is so triggered right now. <laughs> all right. So there there's that. And it's a great way to stay in shape. Let's see what's going on with the Canes. What are we going up against here in round one? They got hurdle. How dare you? Um, who was it? Oh yeah, the Canes. Uh, Tara Vinen, Aho Zvechnikov. Okay, that's pretty good first line. Fogel, Natchez, and uh, Nita Ryder. Oh, they're really, really strong down the middle. Soderberg, Trocek, Armia, McGinn, Stahl, Fast. But they're incredibly strong down the middle. And to be a good playoff team, you got to be strong down the middle and with a good defensive core, which they have. Oh my goodness, this is going to be a tough matchup. They, this is a good team. This is a very good team. Now, they're weak on the wings. That could be our in, but... Oh, they don't have a great goaltender either. So, but neither do we. So, this is tight matchup. <laughs> 75 Shea. This is a very, very tight matchup. Wow. Yeah, again, they're not great on the wings, but they have an incredible center core. So, I bet you their power plays are pretty stacked. All right, well then, we got our work cut out for us. I mean, you compare them to, to what we got working. I mean, our top six, I would say, is better than theirs. But that depth is, it's comparable. And we have better wingers and such. Honestly, we're pretty strong down the middle, too. Uh, at least in the first three lines. Obviously not like they are. Our defensive core maybe has a slight edge, but that's just because AI suck at building good defensive cores. Um, but, I mean, anything could happen. We've seen, you know, goalies cheese it up with really terrible defense, of course. So, it really just comes down to what's going to happen. It comes down to the eye test. On paper, maybe we have the edge. But they're, they're a solid enough team where it's, it's margin of error, right? So, we'll see what happens here. We are still missing, uh, McEwen. So, we'll see. Home ice advantage here. Game one against Carolina. Come on, Tristan Jari. You gotta, you gotta do good for us. Offense, you got, uh, that's, we score five and we lose. That's what I'm talking about. Can't happen. That can't happen. Come on, Tristan Jari. Game two. There we go. Scored five and one. Ugh. Game three. Come on. Ugh. Fuck me, man. We're scoring enough to win. That's just so bad from Tristan Jari. I'm going to, dude, Crosby's killing it. Tristan Jari is just letting us down. I'm going to do something a little crazy here, but it's just, if anything, it's just to send a fucking message. This is, this is, like I said, yeah, it's just to send a message. I'm going to put in a 79 goaltender. Because holy fucking shit, Tristan Jari, man. Stop the puck. I really wanted him to cheese it up, but he's being freaking consistent <laughs> with how he was in the regular season. Not exactly ideal. Woof. Get in there, Lindgren. We'll see what you can do. All right, we're down two games to one. Lindgren, steal us a game, man. Steal us a game, please. Game four. Come on, offense. Let's go. 
ugh, five to three loss, and we're down three games to one. I'm gonna leave him in because it's not like he was any better. Game four, four, five, whatever, we win. Seven to four, we cannot get a save. We're down three games to two. We gotta force this game seven right here. And we don't. We couldn't get a save. That was it. We just couldn't get a fucking save. So we lose in round one. I mean, we should have won this game. We won this game. Could have won this game. Could have won that game. But, I mean, three goals, four is not bad. Eh, this game we deserve to lose. But, I mean, you look at this. There's one that we should have won. A couple that we could have won. And that's why you need a goaltender to make a fucking save. So. Uh, both of our goaltenders got the same amount of wins. So I, I really don't hate my idea of going going back. Maybe I could have switched him out again after those two games, but god damn Crosby, I'm so sorry. Played his ass off. It's alright, we got another really good year ahead of us. And we'll be saving money next year too. So we'll 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 be able to we'll be able to prop hopefully solve that problem. Hopefully be able to solve that problem. Was I in? Oh, yeah, I was in contracts. I do want to check and see if I can actually get these guys in more reasonable deals. He had a terrific season. That is a bit better, but it's still not great. Cop. It's a bit better, actually. Ooh, maybe. Oh, maybe I do that. Maybe a couple years at that price. That's... It's, it's much better. Yeah, that's in the three range. So you know what? I think I'm going to do this right now. Three, six, five. It's a slight increase, but it's not that much. And I think it's well worth it for what Cop brought to the table this year. And in that case, I probably want to get a uh, Kapanen and Mech. What I could do is do the one year thing. And then try to get into a better extension. It's in the four range, which I don't like, but he was really good. Ugh, it's in the high fours too. That's what I'd have to get him to. But I don't, I don't, I don't want to lose him. And we wouldn't be getting a ton of picks anyway. Let's just do the one year thing. Yeah, we'll do the one year play, and hope we can get him to perhaps a a better, more reasonable deal. Uh, Coleman, do I want to hold on to you or look for someone better? It's it's pretty good, man. I did like our third line overall. Maybe not so much in the playoffs, but in the regular season, they did pretty good. They worked well together. Cop did all right production-wise. Kapanen did all right production-wise. But minuses in the playoffs, which, yeah, they got exploited in the playoffs. So maybe we'll look for a better piece instead of Coleman. If we get him back, we get him back. Unfortunately, neither Zach Smith or Clifford want to come back. That's fine for the most part. Kind of like Lafferty as depth. Does he want... Ugh, no. I'm not giving him that, though. I will get back McEwen. Ugh, maybe not. Is he RFA? Yeah, he's RFA. Rue Riedel, Siegenthaler. I'll hold off on those guys. And probably won't get Lindgren back. Neither. <laughs> Look at those fucking playoff numbers. Good God. Oh, woof. We had no goaltending in the playoffs. So that's that's a, that's a sore that we're going to need to fix immediately. Immediately. So that's a rough way to end it. But it's how it goes. We made the playoffs. Our picks aren't as good. We're going to go all in again next year. So we're going to got to look for a goalie. Got to get a goaltender. That's, that's priority number one. I like everything else about this team. We need a goaltender. And it, it, if at that point we're still not great, then... I don't know if it's meant to be, but I think if we get a, a solid goaltender who can sim well, just that's all we need, I feel like. That's really all we need. So, unfortunately, it didn't fall our way this year. I was hoping to at least make it out of the first round, but again, we could not make... He, I it's that, that, that was horrible goaltending. Those are, those are fucking Eshel stats. Like, <laughs> Jesus Christ, man. Ugh, all right, well, it is what it is. Can't really do much about it. So thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button and I'll see you in the next one.